Now, congratulations on completing the 100th print edition of the CRC Handbook. It must give you a lot of pride to reach that milestone. Well, it's, um, it's very uh, good to get it done, but it's uh, been a team effort. You know, the handbook started in 1913. Uh, the Chemical Rubber Company put it together, and we've been fortunate to have a series of really great editors work on it over the years. Today, the need for high quality chemistry and physics data is, is greater than ever. And uh, the handbook really plays an important role in modern scientific research. So what makes the handbook so enduring, especially today when seemingly you can find anything on the web? Well, I think the handbook uh, has a unique place in uh, scientific information today. First, it has a, a, quite a diversity of uh, scientific topics and is put together by over 100 experts. But really, its unique contribution is its dedication to the quality of the data that's contained therein. Today, scientific data is produced in hundreds of thousands of journal articles each year, and the average user who needs the data are, are unable first to find them, and second, in most cases, they can't figure out the quality of the data even if they do find them. Not only that, often they find conflicting data values for the same property, and they're simply unable to understand how one measurement differs from another and which one is better. So in today's world where we're overwhelmed with the amount of data we have, the handbook plays this very important role of providing quality data for people who need it for critical decisions, whether for research or development of new chemical processes or simply to advance uh, their own interesting scientific theory. Goodness, it sounds like it's a lot of work to keep the handbook up to date. How is that done? Well, it's uh, been an impossible task for a single person, so we're very uh, happy that we have uh, a world-class team of experts to help us on it. It's interesting to note that when the handbook was first published uh, in 1913, uh, there were only 81 elements discovered at the time and probably only a few thousand chemicals in commercial production. Today, we have 118 elements that have been discovered uh, and well-known and, and millions of, of compounds uh, and probably hundreds of thousands uh, in commercial. So just simply the number of chemical substances that need to be covered uh, have gotten way beyond what an individual person can do. What is important to recognize is that the of the 400 data tables that are in the handbook, we don't actually try to update each of those every year. We have a, approximately a five-year cycle, which more or less corresponds to the way the research cycle goes of every three to five years, uh, people having done enough measurements to accumulate enough new property data that makes it worthwhile to update the table. But that's especially true for the print edition. In the online edition, of course, in the future, we're going to try to be more current and having more frequent updates uh, to reflect the fact that data is being generated all the time. What are some of the new features you have brought or are planning to bring in the near future? Well, the first obvious uh, change in the handbook in the last couple of years since I took over is the reduced number of pages in the print version. Let me add immediately that we haven't removed any of the data from the online edition. The online edition contains all the data that has been printed in, in all of, uh, virtually all the editions to date. But uh, we realized that the size of the print version was getting uh, unmanageable for a person to pick up, carry, and use. And so we did a lot of work uh, working with the publisher, Fiona McDonald, and, and the previous editor, David Lyde, to select the most important data for the most important substances, and yet keep it at a size where we can add new topics as, as we like. But that said, one important thing is to improve what I call the user experience with the handbook. And that is to 
recognizing that a wide variety of different types of scientists, whether they be chemists or physicists or from other fields such as biology, the geosciences, uh, astrophysics, what have you, uh, turn to the handbook for property data that they don't know. We've improved the introductions to many of the uh, sections of the of the uh, data table so that people more easily understand what data are contained and more easily uh, can find the data that they really need. And this has been done both with the print and the online version. A second feature of, uh, that we've tried to uh, uh, include to improve the, the usability of the data is to begin to create what I call virtual sections of the handbook. The handbook has traditionally been organized by types of properties, properties of fluids, properties of organic compounds, properties of inorganic compounds. But many user communities have a, a view of, uh, of, of data that is from their particular application, for example, environmental chemistry or uh, green chemistry. And these two fields require a little bit of data from this discipline a little bit of data from that discipline, a little bit of data from a third discipline. So we've begun to uh, create a capability online uh, that will allow people to look at a topic such as environmental chemistry and recognize the diversity of data that's in the different traditional sections of the handbook. That will be available hopefully in, in one of the, the future edition, uh, the next edition. Our third area where it's been particularly important to grow is recognition that their hyphenated chemistry and hyphenated physics is becoming more important, just simply in terms of the data they're generating. For example, the properties of, of chemicals in the environment have greatly increased and now include properties that, that people really didn't even measure 10, 20 years ago, such as toxicity, solubility, and uh, in, in mixed, uh, mixed solutions, et cetera, et cetera. And so we've begun to try to find authors who are experts in these areas and to include these new types of property data. Improving the usability of the handbook is a great goal. Uh, what else do you have? Well, one of the important things that uh, we recognize is that a great user community of the handbook are the students uh, in high school and undergraduate uh, education. So we've begun uh, working with some uh, educators, chem chemistry educators, to produce uh, user guides for students and teachers to essentially demonstrate to them uh, certain types of problems that the handbook is ex exceptionally good at, at providing answers uh, uh, for the students. And uh, we're going to have those available with uh, the release of the 100th edition, and we're very excited about that. What do you see as the challenges of the future? And are you ready to make sure the handbook can meet them? Well, of course, uh, the biggest challenge that we face is the tsunami of data. Incredible advances in uh, instrumentation because of uh, the new ability to synthesize many, many new types of chemical substances. And because modeling techniques are now generating lots of data, people are just overwhelmed with the amount of data that are being produced. And if 20 years ago, 50 years ago, people were finding it difficult to find data and understand their quality in the tsunami of data, it is really, really becoming almost impossible. We like to deal with that by making sure the people we work with understand the breadth and the depth of, of the data in the particular subject area that they're working on. And we think that still our emphasis on quality uh, will really serve us well in helping people deal with this overwhelming amount of data. A second challenge is that there, the tools of big data or data science are now penetrating all of science, uh, what we might call knowledge discovery tools, things like machine learning, artificial intelligence, what have you. Uh, these tools require large sets of data, but more importantly, they require really good data because the old adage, garbage in, garbage out, 
really holds true for knowledge discovery. And that's one reason why we are looking to expand the coverage of the handbook so that we're able to provide people who are taking advantage of, of big data tools, uh, have available to them a, a coherent, well-qualified uh, body of data that can help them. A third challenge is uh, the fact that much data now is being produced by models. And quite frankly, uh, that's a real challenge not only to us, but to the scientific community. Because for experimental measurements, there's a well-defined technology of, of determining the uncertainty in the measurement. In today's modeling world, there is no such theory of uncertainty. And consequently, people can develop very good models, generate lots of data, but the uncertainty associated with them is very unclear. What role does the handbook play in the quality of data in science today? Uh, important question, because the real role of the handbook uh, with respect to data quality is that users can be confident that these are the best available numbers of property data that have been uh, measured and found in the literature. Uh, all the data have been carefully reviewed by our experts and evaluated according to very well-defined criteria. Coming up, what final thoughts do you have about the 100th print edition of the CRC Handbook? Well, to me, it's very exciting because I've been working with such a great team of people, both in the publishing area as well as the experts who actually collect, evaluate, and create the data tables that are uh, in the handbook. That's so rewarding. I've been working for over 40 years in the field of scientific data, and I consider the team that we've put together for the handbook to be one of the most enjoyable groups of people I've ever worked with. But in addition, it's, it's caused me to do a lot of thinking about the future of scientific data activities, and I realized that now more than ever, the emphasis on quality that the CRC Handbook of Chemistry and Physics brings to an important corpus of, of chemistry and physics data is really critical to making sure that new models, new knowledge discovery, and, and scientific research is, is firmly grounded in reality, in, in actual proven uh, highly uh, evaluated scientific data. I like to sum up by saying the the handbook to me is uh, a heritage of high quality data that's looking to the future, and I'm looking forward to to working with it uh, for many years to come. Mm -hmm.